Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. For this video, I prepared 8 questions for you to answer for 30 seconds. This is to assess some of your knowledge on the fundamentals of nursing. After answering the 8 questions, I will provide the correct answer in rationale. So get a pen and paper. Let's start. Question number 1. Question number one. A nurse is caring for a patient right after the removal of the endotracheal tube. Upon assessment, which of the following signs should the nurse report to the physician immediately? First, you need to note this. Right after the removal of the endotracheal tube and reports to the physician immediately. Remember that the main danger 
after removal of the artificial airway is the patient's ability to maintain patent airway and breathe independently. Therefore, after the removal of the endotracheal tube, the nurse must monitor for respiratory distress. Strider is a high-pitched, coarse sound that is heard with a stethoscope over the trachea. It indicates airway edema and possible airway obstruction. That's why it is the symptom that must be reported immediately. Other options are not signs that require immediate notification of the physician. Question number two. Nurse Snow is assessing her patient's surgical incision for signs of infection. Which finding would she interpret as a normal finding at the surgical site? Which is a normal finding? Infection may be caused by poor aseptic technique or a contaminated wound before surgical exploration. Other conditions like diabetes mellitus or being immunocompromised may also put them at risk of infection. Wound infection usually appears 3 to 6 days after surgery. Signs and symptoms of infection include warm, red, and tender skin around the incision. Purulent material may exit from drains or separated wound edges. Therefore, the correct answer is letter B, because serious drainage is an expected finding at the surgical site. Question number three. Nurse Moon is conducting preoperative teaching to a patient who needs to use an incentive spirometer after the surgery. She should include which piece of information in discussions with the patient. As a nurse, health teaching is important and we should know the vital information. The incentive spirometer is a common device recommended by physicians to use after surgery. This is to facilitate the recovery of the lungs of their patients. For optimal lung expansion with the incentive spirometer, the patient should position in a semi-fowler's or high-fowler's position or with the head of the bed elevated 45 to 90 degrees. The mouthpiece should be covered completely and tightly while the client inhales slowly with a constant flow through the unit. The breath should be held for 5 seconds before exhaling slowly. Therefore, the correct answer is letter A. Question number 4. A nurse is preparing to remove a nasogastric tube from his patient. He should instruct the patient to do which of the following just before the nurse removes the tube. When we remove a nasogastric tube, it is important to instruct our patient to take and hold the deep breath. This will close the epiglottis and allow for easy removal through the esophagus into the nose. The nurse must remove it with one smooth, continuous pull. Therefore, the correct answer is letter B. For more nursing skills discussion, you can check the link in the description below after this video. Question number 5. In the ER, the nurse is performing CPR on an adult patient. When performing chest compressions, the depth should be at least. If you already know the principles in BLS or the basic life support, you might have chosen the correct answer easily. But if not, take time to scan your notes or check our simple discussion here. Let's talk about chest compression. For an adult, place the palm over the patient's sternum just above the siphoid process. For the depth, it should be one-third of the AP diameter of the chest. For an adult, at least two inches. 
while one and a half inch for infants. Allow full chest recoil between compressions. Therefore, the correct answer is letter D. Question number six. The physician ordered in the ER to administer 3,000 ml of D5 water for 24 hours. The assigned nurse determines that blank ml per hour should be given to the patient. For a question like this, read it carefully and note the unit that is being asked. Since it is asking for ml per hour, we can just divide the given numbers or use this formula. Total volume divided by the number of hours to be infused. For this question, there's no need to convert because it has the same unit. So the correct answer is 125 ml per hour. Question number 7. At 1 a.m., Nurse Moon checks her patient in room 207 and notices that the waste basket is on fire. She immediately assists the patient out of the room. Being in the situation, what is your next nursing action? Do you remember the mnemonic race that we used to prioritize in the event of a fire? R stands for rescue. Our priority is to rescue the patients who are in immediate danger. The next step is to activate the fire alarm. Then, confine the fire by closing all doors. And finally, extinguish the fire. So the correct answer is letter A. Activate the alarm. For our last question, the nurse is caring for a patient who is one day post-op for a total hip replacement, which is the best position in which the nurse should place the patient. Positioning after a total hip replacement depends on the surgical techniques used, the method of implantation, the prosthesis, and the physician's preference. Abduction is maintained when the client is in supine position or positioned on the non-operative side. Internal and external rotation, adduction or side lying on the operative side is avoided unless specifically prescribed by the physician. So the correct answer is letter C. On the non-operative side with the legs, Abducted. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.